Hey guys, so welcome to Coding Box Automation Lab. And this is Shurful. This th session is about to see a different kind of challenges we usually face uh, during our automation framework. And we will also see that uh, how we can overcome that kind of problems. Okay, let's go. So here is the number of challenges you know I wrote that uh, you know I face in my real life experience. So based on my experience, I wrote all these challenges. Here's the number one, dealing with JavaScript auto-suggestive drop-down result. So, you know, uh, as an example, if you have an application uh, like you have to uh, write something uh, in a, a box, then this, uh, based on your uh, your request, there will be some suggested results. Say the Google search box, right? We see this uh, based on our type, uh, that the result will come up or airlines websites right you you type the airport you know so ny it will show all the results related to the air uh, and new work airports so those are called you know javascript suggested auto suggested drop down options so it's created in the runtime when you type uh, any word on those box so uh, we can hardcore to select any one of the drop down options that time we have to create dynamic Expat dynamic expat using like parent child descended result, you know, uh, that would be the best option so that we can dynamically, you know, select the one of the options we're looking for from the out of the uh, uh, number of drop down result. Okay, number two, timeout resulting from synchronization problem. Timeout resulting from synchronization uh, problem means you know, elements are not found due to timeout, you know, uh, even after we use implicitly wait or explicitly wait, or even thread slips. The final solution would be using JavaScript executor class. An executor script, that's another method inside the JavaScript executor class that can ha have a lots of other options uh, for, for this method, and we can use that method to handle our, uh, you know, timeout issue. Number three. Browser compatibility issue. I have seen in my real life, see, like you know, uh, test script got to execute properly in a Chrome or Firefox browser, but in IE browser, you know, we've had so many issues like you know, synchronization or timeout issues, like uh, element not uh, uh, found, and we know that uh, you know, IE especially the Internet Explorer Edge version is slower than Chrome or other browser. So what would be the solution? The solution would be uh, used. Try to use uh, you know explicitly void or implicitly void uh, um, uh, thread slips and uh, different. And if still you know you, you see this like yeah, the it's not a synchronization issue. It's an issue. Uh, it's like the element is not finding by the path by the locator. Then we have to use a different or unique X path or CSS selector to locate that object speci uh, specifically. Okay. The next one, okay, found multiple elements with with the same attribute or properties. The very common uh, issues, like you know, uh, example, all the radio buttons have the same locators, mean have the same attribute value. So how to solve that? How we can distinguish one of the specific radio button from the others? Because uh, it's a uh, even though they're all of them have the same attribute, the same properties, right? So so its solution would be try to create a unique locator using unique XPath or CSS selector, followed parent-child relationship, sibling to sibling relationship, and so on. Or, you know, uh, we can get the total number of element using size method for the same attribute, then use for a loop and and store in a uh, in a each and every element in a variable following index number, then use if condition. You know to get the right element that I was looking for, and after that, you know, uh, you know, inside the if uh, if condition, we if body, we can, uh, you know, click that button or whatever we need to do, we can do this. Okay. 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 Next one is very interesting. Working on iframe within an iframe. I mean a frame inside a frame. So if you have a, 
uh, item or element that if, which is f uh, a frame inside a frame how we can you know look at that element or do some testing yeah that's that was one of the very challenging thing so, so my solution was first I try to find the total number of outer iframe so we know this uh, how to find the total number of outer iframe using the tag name the iframe uh, tag name and then use the size so I know this like total number of outer iframe in this HTML page and after that I've, I use the index number you know to get in inside the right uh, you know outer uh, uh, frame the using like a uh, you know driver uh, switch to iframe then pass the frame number then again inside the frame now I have to, I have if I have a more than fr more a more frame then again I have to switch my driver to get inside the inner frame and then look at the element and do the job whatever I need to do okay next one it's uh, handling dynamically ch you know changing element properties uh, it means you know it's uh, uh, those uh, we have seen or I have seen like um, some element uh, uh, the properties get changed say uh, 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 name properties you know the name attribute and the value is like you know uh, username one two three four five six and next day you will see username five six seven eight nine ten so some of the part of the value it's getting changing for attributes so how, how we can handle this so my solution was I try to traverse to that particular element dynamically other than hard code the path means I traverse from parent to child like put the child's number uh, to that for, for that specific uh, element is located so I was not dependent on a specific elements attribute other than I was uh, using uh, you know the child's number so you know uh, sometimes even I use a contains method to use a particular uh, uh, you know fixed keyword as a value of attribute say if you have a name uh, attribute and it's uh, the value is like username one two three four so you just use that username uh, you know uh, uh, with a contains method not the whole part like the changing part you are not going to use the rest of the number you are not going to use okay next is handling Waven Windows alert pop-ups so for web uh, we used a uh, built-in selenium I used built-in selenium method as switch to method switch to uh, dot alert method that we we all know but you know there is no built-in method to handle the windows pop-up so that time we had to depend on third-party tools it's called auto IT to handle the window alert okay next working on multiple windows or child windows okay uh, as you know like if you have just two windows it's easily we can we can handle you know easily we can count uh, use the get window handles method and get the session ID parent and child window and pass that easily we can do it but it's a little bit challenging when we have a more than two windows like four five ten uh, or five you know um, uh, child windows still we are going to the solution is this uh, we're going to use a uh, get window handles method to store and create the unique session ID for each and every windows including the parent windows and pass the right session ID to switch uh, our driver to the right child window okay uh, we can we can do there is an alternate way too like we can use uh, when you traverse uh, when you use a get window handles method and and store in a, a set container and uh, traverse like uh, using iterator method to traverse that set container uh, and to create the session ID we can use uh, uh, another uh, in, in a iterator method we can use another method is called uh, has next you know has next method that will check you know if there is a, any a session ID or any window is stored in this container or not if is that we'll use next method and uh, uh, you know so so when will the next method will we store that next method uh, uh, the, the, the window is going to be in in the 
uh, container the whatever will get that window will put in it say example uh, in a variable say window right and uh, we'll compare that window you know uh, uh, like what's the number of the window we are expecting specifically if you want to go to in a specific window out of 10 or out of 5 so we'll we'll use another if condition inside that if it's a match then we'll we'll go there we'll switch our driver up there and do the things whatever we need to do okay or just follow this you know the regular way just use the get window handles method create the session ID every time we we use uh, you know uh, uh, next method and put in a variable and then use that specific specific uh, session ID uh, and and pass to that you know the the method we know like uh, driver dot switch to window and inside the window the pass the session ID as argument next one uploading and downloading files in selenium selenium doesn't have direct solution or method to handle any uploading and downloading files so we had to depend on third party tools again we used auto auto IT right we can use that tools next one is creating object repository again selenium is so we know the selenium is an API so it doesn't have pre-made any object repository so we had to create our own object repository uh, you know uh, to uh, to manage and maintain smartly from a central place our all of the objects so we have now it's a selenium have a concept framework concept is called page object pattern so we use this frame we can use this page object pattern framework you know uh, and we can uh, uh, solve this uh, object repository issues or, or build in nice smart object repository in selenium framework and the last one it's creating external report Again, Selenium doesn't have any built-in report other than very simple HTML for format report, which is a part of TestNG we all know. So uh, we can create a bit more professional report and import to our project, which is uh, which is known as Extend Report NG. I mean, you have to code this. You know, you have to code code this. Uh, create a Java class and code this uh, for this report, and you can import that class to your project. Uh, you know, and then you can and it will uh, you can use that report. You know, as your external report, but it will be much better than your regular, uh, just simple HTML formatted report. Okay, I believe that's all. You know. Uh, the common very common challenges uh, we all we face in selenium framework beyond that uh, you may face uh, uh, different other you know uh, uh, challenges please uh, comment below uh, in the you know uh, if you face a different others other types of uh, uh, the problem in your framework so we can discuss we can see this our result you know the or or the answer and uh, help each other uh, say so example it could be like how we can read the data from HTML canvas that could be you know one of the uh, unique problem I face too let's see that if you can find out the result or not anyways thank you so much and uh, you have a good one